Hi, welcome to EdTech Camp On Air. I hope you have a coffee going and you're all set for some exciting presentations today. Now I'm Ramona Mahark and I'm a special education teacher in a developmental classroom with the Thames Valley District School Board at a high school in St. Thomas, Ontario. And in my session today, I'm going to be talking about connecting classrooms through online read-alouds. These read-alouds can apply to any grade level and a huge variety of topics. Now, while it's mainly literacy based, you can get creative and you can make a read aloud about just about anything. My board's a Google board, so most of my examples will be googly. So if you're a Microsoft board, I'm sure there are similar applications that you can use. I'm just not very familiar with them. Now, during this presentation, I invite you to engage by using the hashtag EdTechCampOnAir on Twitter. Go ahead and tweet out your questions. I'll respond to as many as I can while the video plays and shortly afterwards. Now, if you have questions after the session, please DM me through my Twitter handle, at Ramona Mahark. Now, if you would like a copy of this slideshow, please use the bit.ly that I've tried to, to put on each slide, bit.ly read and connect. This way, you can make a copy of the slideshow and access all the live links I've included. So let's get started. So first of all, what the heck are readalouts? So a read aloud is a book or books that are read aloud and shared online around the world. And it consists of mainly a shared book or books that are read around the same time and then connecting through social media. So the books themselves, there might be a digital version of the book, which I'll show you an example of, that a class has created and then they share it via YouTube or other videos. Now it could be a book that the teacher reads aloud to the class or an audio book, or it could be a series of picture books with a similar theme that are shared over the same period of time online. I'm going to show you an example of a digital version of a picture book created by my students for a recent read aloud. After the fall. Welcome to week three. Don't forget to tweet using hashtag Mindset Monday, LRSD. My name is Humpty Dumpty. This is my favorite spot high up on the wall. I know it's an odd place for an egg to be, but I loved being close to the birds. Then one day I fell. I'm short of famous for the part, for that part. Folks called it the Great Fall, which sounds a little grand. It was just an accident, but it changed my life. Fortunately, all the coons men managed to put me back together again. Well, most of me, there were some parts that couldn't be healed with bandages and glue. After that day, I became afraid of heights. I was so scared that I, it kept me from enjoying some of my favorite things. Question one, have you ever been in an accident and what happened? I walked past the wall every day and I would think about think, climbing the ladder again. I really missed the birds and being high above the city, but I could never do it because a new accident what can happen. Okay, so this um, digital book that we created, we created using iMovie on the kids' iPads. We took pictures of each of the pages of the book, and then we inserted them into iMovie, and then the kids did voiceovers um, onto iMovie and added some sound effects. This book worked really good with my class because I have some readers who aren't as strong as others and there's not a lot of writing on each page for them. If you have a book that has more writing on it, you're going to want to maybe um, have kids who are better readers or you may have to do a bit of the reading yourself. And you'll notice that we also inserted the questions that we're sharing on Twitter inside as well so that as the kids are listening or watching the video, that they can see some of the questions and be thinking about them before they are actually going to tweet them. And I'll just fast forward here a bit to the end. And learn how to fly. Life begins when you get back up. 
Join Mindset Monday next week for the girl who never made mistakes. Okay, and here is an example of the one that they created for Kindness Crew CRSS. And the book that the kids picked for this one showing um, kindness had a lot more writing on the page. And so because I had readers who weren't as strong, um, I had to do a bit of the reading with them on that one. So I'm going to leave that one for now because you can see the link. Um, right here. And I'll let you check that book out because I had to do a bit more reading in that one. But let's look about at what a read aloud is all about. So for this read aloud, the creator who was a, who was a teacher in Australia, picked a kindness theme and then asked classes to volunteer to host her class hosted week one, my class hosted week two, and then two other classes hosted the other weeks. And your class picks the book and creates the video and creates the slideshow with the questions that you're going to share out on Twitter. And for this one, all of them had a very much uh, kindness theme. So then, of course, once you've got your book all made, you want to make sure that you're connecting online. And so classrooms can answer the questions that your class creates through a Twitter slow chat. The classes then can also share activities and thoughts about the book through Twitter or other platforms like a Padlet, a Google Hangout, et cetera. And I'll show you that a little bit, a little bit later in this video. And they are always excited. Um, for example, we were doing Enemy Pie in which a, a young man makes a pie with all kinds, of, he thinks all kinds of gross things in the pie to give to serve to his enemy. And so my students created recipes for an enemy pie and put things in it like, um, um, dog poo and worms and a lot of gross things and they they created a um a, a video or not a video they created a visual for it and then we shared we took a picture of each one and we shared them on twitter as well so it's not just the book that you're sharing it's some of the activities and the questions and it's a good way to connect with other classrooms here's an example of one of the slides that we used um, when we were doing enemy pie and so the students came up with the questions and we created the slides and then you take a picture of the slide and you tweet it out here we are connecting so this is the week that we were hosting and you can see here is the creator of the kindness crew crss um, read aloud four weeks of kindness and so we were week two and then you can see how we introduced ourselves in this tweet and then you can see one of the classes, uh, this one I believe is in Iowa, um, is responding to our call to action with what's going on. And then we respond to them. And the kids love this back and forth through Twitter because um, they're connecting with kids all over the world on the same book. And beyond the questions that you share, they quite often will ask students around the world, okay, um, for example, there was a class in Winnipeg and we had some back and forth about the Winnipeg Jets and the Toronto Maple Leafs. We also shared maps to see how far apart we were and how long it would take to drive to some of these places or fly to some of these places. Because as you can imagine, we can't really drive to Australia. And the kids were quite amazed at the length of time it would take to fly to some of these places or could we, could we even drive to some of these places? So if we go to the next one, then you can see here we are with with our um, slide that we took a picture of and posted it out on Twitter. And then here we are, um, this classroom has responded to question five. So they put the A5 question there so we know which one they're responding to. And then we respond to them. This uh, is a group, I oh, LCS Kindergarten. I think they are in Indiana maybe, I'd have to look that one up. But you can see that they are responding to our question is what makes a good friend. And so the students um, are tweeting through the classroom account that a good friend is someone you know and feel comfortable with. And then we responded to that as well. So um, you can use your own Twitter account if you'd like. Um, I find it much easier. I have my own Twitter account, but I also have a classroom Twitter account. And it's good practice for the kids to be um, composing the tweets and learning some good digital citizenship about what they can post. Um, they, my students like to post um, GIFs with, with 
the responses quite often. And so it's a very good um, digital citizenship lesson while we're doing that to talk about what gifts are appropriate to share and what are not appropriate to share. And that maybe we are high school students. And so some gifts might be more appropriate for high school kids, but not appropriate for some of the students. As you can see, we're responding to kindergarten students here and some of the gifts won't be appropriate to share with them. Now, how do you participate in a read aloud? And that's kind of up to you. I mean, how much you participate, if you want to go daily, if you want to go weekly, you know, maybe you just want to read the book or watch the book video and join the Twitter slow chat by using the hashtag. Or you might want to go a little bigger. You can set up a Google Hangout um, by contacting one of the other classes that you're contacting on Twitter around the world. And my students love doing the Google Hangouts and talking to students, not just about the book, but about where they live. They want to know about the weather. They want to know what those students are doing. And they're always, always amazed that there's things that they are very similar and that there's things that are new to them. Uh, we were talking to a classroom in Massachusetts, I believe, and the students were talking about a game they had played at recess that we had never heard of. And so those students then showed us uh, the rules for that game and how to play it. And uh, that was something that we, we then did with our students. So there's really neat connections that you can make through these read alouds. You could also create um, a student inquiry project to go with the book. You can share their work, which I mentioned with the enemy pie on, on your website or through your Twitter handle, or you can create a video and share it. And you can create online discussion through Twitter, Flipgrid or Padlet or other platforms that you like to use. And I'll show you how to do that too. Here's an example, um, not from my class, from another class, um, through the Global Read Aloud, which we'll be talking about. And this is a Padlet where the teacher has posted a question or something to think about with the book. And the students are given the link to go into Padlet and they put down their own thoughts and share them. You could uh, just have this for your class or you could open up to link to other classes if you like to put their thoughts in too. And also, you know, when you're doing a Padlet that you open up, great time to talk about all those digital citizenship things that they need to remember when they're posting online. We love to do Google Hangouts in my room. And so you can see here, uh, we've got my class um, and we are connecting. This is a, a class that we're connecting with in London, but we've also connected with classes all over the world. Um, it's often easier to connect with classrooms in North America just because of the time difference. And that's the beauty of the slow chat is you can connect with schools in Australia because huge time difference there, you know, when we're up, they're sleeping. Um, but a great way to do this. And there's certainly lots of classes in Canada and the US who are more than happy to, to do a Google Hangout or Skype with you about the book. If you aren't sure how to do a Google Hangout, there's lots of tutorials on YouTube. And I also have a step-by-step -step, um, slideshow that will show you how to set up a Google Hangout if you want to go to the bit.ly meet da world. And that will show you how to do it step-by-step-by-step. -by -step -by -step. I'm not gonna go into that in this video. Another thing my students love to do is to create book snaps. And this is something that is created by uh, Tara Martin. And these are examples from uh, this fall, we were in the Global Read Aloud and the book we were reading together um, with classes all over the world was called Refugee. And so here is uh, an example that I showed and here's an example that my student made of a book snap. So they made this using Google Slides and then we took a picture of that slide and we, um, and we posted it on Twitter and using the GRA hashtag for refugee and also using the hashtag booksnaps. I'm just gonna um, direct you to Tara Martin's website. And I do have a link to this in the presentation and in the bit.ly. We use um, Google uh, Slides to create booksnaps, but there's lots of applications you can use. Um, it, started, <clears throat> it started using um, Snapchat but a lot of my students don't have access to that. And if you have younger kids, they won't have access to that on their phones, but there's certainly lots of different ones you can use. And if you go to Tara's website, she's got step-by-step -step videos of how to create them using Snapchat and uh, Canva, um, all kinds of different ones on her blog. So at the end of this presentation, I have a slide with all the resources please, please go and check out Tara Martin's 
um, website. She's got great stuff on there. And another great thing that she has is called um, hashtag gratitude snaps and um, hashtag real you snaps, which are also really fun to do with your students and to share online. Okay, so that's book snaps. <clears throat> Here's a few examples of some online read alouds. And I'm probably gonna talk mostly today about the global read aloud because it's the big one, but my students have also participated in a few others. So the global read aloud is kind of like the granddaddy, the big one, hashtag GRA. And it's held each October, November. It runs for six weeks and there's a book for every level of school age reader from JK up to grade 12. So she usually groups them like JK grade three, and then there's like a middle years, and then there's like a grade seven, eight, nine book, and then there's a high school book. There are millions of students involved in this at this time of the year, and it is probably one of the best read alouds out there. <clears throat> I'm gonna let her tell you more about it. So let's just go to that video. My name is Pernille Rip. I'm the founder of the Global Read Aloud Project and a seventh grade teacher in Oregon, Wisconsin, and I transform lives through literacy. So the Global Read Aloud started in 2010 with a simple goal in mind, read a book to connect the world. And so every year it's grown from that, but the concept of it continues to be very simple. You pick a book and then at the same time across the world, you read it aloud to your students and you use technology to connect. There is no lesson plan. There's, you know, a, a very simple map to follow, but what you want to do with it is, is great. And I just sit back and say, sounds good. Go do it and live your dream. The first year, it was about 150 kids, maybe 180. And we all read The Little Prince over four weeks and it was magical. My students loved it. They drew, um, they shared their drawings, we made videos. And when the project ended, I thought, well, that was nice. What a great way to start the year. And yet a couple of weeks later, people said, when are we doing it again? And so that's when I knew that maybe we were onto something. So starting October 5th this year of 2015, we'll be reading uh, the books aloud and trying to connect kids around the world around the shared purpose. What I love every single year is that teacher that comes and says, I don't know what to do with technology. I keep being told to use technology, please help. And they find a project like the Global Read Aloud and say, okay, well, if these people can use Skype or if these people can use blogging, then I can too. And the minute we start transforming the way we teach, we're changing lives for our students, for kids who really are reluctant to read, for them to hear a story that might be the difference between them not becoming readers and becoming readers because it might lead them to the next book. That's what I live for because those kids all of a sudden see that there's books written for them that they can find themselves in and that books are okay, that it's okay to be a reader. And so I think that's the power of the Global Read Aloud as well. It gives us a shared purpose, but then all of a sudden we start connecting in the human sense of the word connecting and sharing the lives uh, that we lead with others. When we hit a quarter of a million, um, I cried because who'd have ever thought that some random idea that some random teacher from Wisconsin all of a sudden is impacting all of these kids around the world. Okay, so that's Pernille who created the Global Read Aloud and I've got the link to that video if you want to see that uh, right there. And there's um, certainly on YouTube several more videos about the Global Read Aloud and if you want to hear um, Pernille talk more about it. This video was made in 2015. Um, I believe this year they were, oh, they were into the millions of students participating worldwide. So it's quite amazing. Um, you can sign up for the Global Read Aloud uh, let me find it here by just going to Global Read Aloud, one book to connect the world. And there it is. Okay. And you can already sign up for the 2019 Global Read Aloud through her website right there. And she's got a blog about all the different things going on um, for the different uh, participants. You can suggest a book if you have a book you think would be great. 
There's something on the history, frequently asked questions. You can buy a global read aloud t-shirt. Um, but really, it's a super, super read aloud to be a part of because so many people in the world are involved and there's a book for every level. So just to show you um, what I mean about a book for every level, here are the books for the Global Read Aloud from 2018. So for the young readers, there were four picture books, um, which were shared over six weeks right here. And then this was kind of the um, grade three, four or five early chapter book called A Boy Called Bat. And then just above that was A Mall Unbound. Um, and then the book that my students, um, we read Refugee by Alan Gratz. And we used the audio book that is available for that. And that's, um, you know, it's probably about 40 chapters. And it's about three different um, refugees over different time spans. So one in World War II and one escaping Cuba in the 90s and another one in Syria in um, 2017. So very topical and seeing the, the similarities for refugees in the different time periods. And, and not only that, but all the, the geography um, connections as well, when you're mapping where these um, refugees are coming from and where they're going and seeing the troubles that they have. And then the, um, the uh, high school, the upper grades um, book was called Love, Hate and Other Filters. So lots, um, lots of books at all different levels. If you are a teacher in, in from JK to 12, there is a book in the Global Read Aloud that will work for your class. All right, another one um, that was, it ran for the second time this year um, is called Hashtag Mindset Monday LRSD. And it's got a very growth mindset um, theme to it. So they used picture books and they, the great thing about this one is um, you can participate in French and in English. And it was created by two primary French immersion teachers in Winnipeg. And my class hosted week three. I shared a little bit of that book with you earlier. And there were four um, books shared, one each week, picture books um, that were, although picture books, um, my students who are high school age really got a lot out of the books and we talked about the themes and it was very interesting to connect with different grades. So there were kids, grade one, kindergarten, all the way up to high school level, like we were participating and talking about growth mindset and learning from each other. And then one that's going on as I create this video is called Kindness Crew CRSS. Um, once again, picture books with a kindness theme running in February to coincide with Valentine's Day and Kindness Month. And this one was created by an elementary teacher in Australia. Uh, her name's Karen Caswell. And um, we, I believe, were the only Canadian uh, host classroom. And we were week two, Enemy Pie. Um, but they also read... Uh, three, three other books, um, wonderful books about how to be kind, how to spread kindness, the importance of being kind. And this was the first year this is running, um, but she has been very excited about the um, classrooms that have participated, and I'm sure she will probably run it again next year. So if you want to get involved in that, here uh, is her Twitter handle. So you're saying, I like the idea of a read aloud, I maybe might get involved in these, but maybe I'd like to create my own hashtag read aloud. How the heck do I do that? So let's have a look. So the first step is you need to pick a book or a theme or an author or whatever it is you want. So maybe you're going to have a history read aloud. Maybe you're going to have a geography read aloud. Maybe you want to read aloud um, a series of picture books by the same author or by the same illustrator. Maybe it's an art read aloud where you're talking about the pictures in the different books by the same illustrator. Maybe it's a book, um, it's a series of books that talk about math. Possibilities are endless and it's up to you. You can see my little bitmoji there is talking that she wants to read and share books about friendship. But that's just an example. I mean, sky's the limit. The next step for you is to promote the idea through a Twitter or a blog post. You need to tell everyone your why, why you're doing it, and what your read aloud is all about. You need to create a hashtag that makes it easy to follow. So for example, um, the hashtag GRA, or hashtag Kindness Crew CRSS, or hashtag um, Monday Mindset LRSD. Find a hashtag that isn't being used by anyone else and tailor it to your read aloud so that people kind of know what it's about. You should also use the hashtag read alouds because people will go to that hashtag 
to find different read alouds that are going on and get involved in. And when you do that, once you do your Twitter post or your blog post, make sure you ask for other classrooms to help you host a week. Because if you're going for more than one week, it's a good way to share the load. And I'll show you an example here. So here is um, Annette uh, Roque's uh, Growth Mindset Week 1 uh, blog post. So she created the blog, blog post, then she shared the link to the blog post on Twitter so that people could get involved using her hashtag Mindset Monday LRSD. And she also included the hashtag Read Aloud so that people could get involved. She shows you the books that are being read and when. Now, if you're looking for hosts, um, you want to make sure that you allow them maybe to pick a book. But this is once she had things set. And then she tells you everything you need to know about how to do the read aloud. The hashtags, what we're reading when, and then include from your host uh, classrooms, the video for each book. Here it is, French and English. And then the slides that people are going to need to use with their students to answer the questions, right? So when your classroom is responding to the questions, they're going to use Q2, A2, and then answer, and make sure that you put hashtag, whatever the hashtag is for that read. So that is um, for week one of the Growth Mindset Read Aloud, her blog post. And you can see as you go on, she's got, the, she's got them in French and English, and she's got a blog post each week to share the information. And then the hosting class will also um, send out their post on Twitter with the hashtag and the slides um, each day to share with everybody so that they're right there and ready to go. And then here's Karen's um, post about the kindness read aloud. And she talks about what her inspiration was and why she's doing this, the importance of kindness. She's got a little video there that you can share with your students, what you can expect. And here she's got the books, so you know what you're reading when. And the great thing about this is because you created videos of each book, the classroom doesn't even actually have to have the book. You can share the book through YouTube. Okay, and she's got um, posts for each week that you can check so you know where everything is, where to find things. So really important to share all that information with not just the people who are hosting, but with all the classrooms who are participating. Okay, there is the link for Annex post right there. And I do show the link for Karen's um, at the end of the video. So once you have it all figured out, what you're going to read, who your host classrooms are, you've got your blog post out there, you've shared the blog post on Twitter, you need to ask others to join you. So you can do that through Twitter if you like, or you can use a Google form and get classrooms to sign up to participate and to ask classes to sign up to host a week. In that blog post, once again, remember, set those dates so everyone knows what book you're sharing and when, what dates you're covering them, or portions of a larger book. So for example, if you're only doing one book, like a large chapter book like Refugee, um, you want to make sure you say, okay, we're all reading chapters one till 10 first week, and then 11 to 20 week two. You don't want people to get too far ahead because then if you're connecting um, with the questions, students will know answers. Some classes will be ahead of others and be able to answer things that you don't want them to quite know yet. And if you want to do a Google Hangout, you want to kind of all be literally on the same page. And always, always include the hashtag. And of course, most importantly, you got to get your students involved. So if you're doing picture books, have them create or help create the book video if you're doing the picture books. So as you could see in the video that we created for Enemy Pie and for um, After the Fall, my students took the pictures, they did the reading, they did the voiceovers, um, then they picked the sound effects they wanted to include. Have them help you create those slow chat questions. So what questions are we gonna ask based on this book? And if they are you know, tech savvy, have them create the slides that you're going to share it on and talk about what do you have to include on the on the slide. Remember to use the hashtag and you have to remember to um, put your Twitter handle on so people can tag you on it. Um, and then, of course, when they are participating, share their answers in the slow chat. You can also do book snaps, padlets, and Flipgrid. You want to be involved, um, whether it's daily or weekly, in connecting and encouraging others. 
So you follow the hashtag you created to like, to respond, and to share responses and ideas. And you want to repost the information about the Read Aloud regularly during the process so that people can see what's going on and yet still get involved. So just because they haven't joined in on week one doesn't mean they can't join week two, week three, week four. So how do you connect with other classrooms? Well, of course, Twitter, that's the main way you do for a read aloud. You got to follow the hashtag for the book or for the read aloud. Answer the questions in the slow chats. Use your classroom account. Um, Facebook groups are quite common as well. Now, that's more for the global read aloud. And that's where teachers share a lot of resources and make connections. And that is often where you'll get all the information you need for postcards, exchanges, um, whether you do snail mail or a digital postcard, um, links to Padlets all the different things that teachers want to talk back and forth with. And this is more for the global read aloud you'll find in the Facebook groups. You can use Google My Maps. You can do video exchanges. For example, I was talking about the class that we connected with in Massachusetts and they were talking about a game we had never heard of. So they uh, did a video tutorial for us. They created a video about this game and how to play it and the equipment we needed. And then they did a short video of them playing it so that my students could see how it worked. Google Hangouts and Skype are huge. Um, so my students love, love, love these. And then you can also blog. Um, you can use platforms like WriteAbout, KidBlog, Flipgrid. So if you're going to use Twitter, once again, it's important to know the hashtags. And I've shown you a few examples for the Global Read Aloud this year, what the different um, hashtags were. Um, so for the picture study, A Boy Called Bat, they're all kind of close to what the book is so that you remember what it is. And when you're tweeting things out, it's clear in your mind and that you uh, are sharing that so people can follow it. So if you want to see how that works, we're going to go there. So I went to, if you go to your classroom account, so here is my Harks Vikings, my classroom account, and then you're going to search for that hashtag. Okay, so kindness crew CRSS. And then usually what you want to do is to go to the latest to see the newest. Okay, and then you can see Everything that has that hashtag is going to pop up. You can see the different classrooms who are involved. Here's a classroom sharing some of the things that they did. Here's an example of them tweeting out the question, the call to action, and here's the slide they created. Here they are answering some of the questions. Okay, here you are, my students are responding. This is week three now, so you can see my class responding to the questions using the hashtag using that format q5a5 okay and once again we talked about my students like to add gifts so that's that there all right also you can use flipgrid um, i use this more in the global read aloud I th uh, than some of the other things but um, you certainly could set up a flipgrid to share not just with your class but with um, classes around the world um, if you want to know how to use Flipgrid um, on my website, I have a slideshow that takes you step by step how to get involved. And there's the link there. Um, there's the link or you can use the bit.ly flip in PD day. Um, I'll just show you quickly what Flipgrid looks like. Okay, so this isn't for a read aloud. This is uh, my kids do um, video blogging instead of um, regular blogging. And so the uh, February 20th, they were doing, do kids need homework? So I posted a question for them and then they have to respond. And here's an example of what it looks like. I don't think kids need homework because when I go home, I just want to relax and I don't want to think about school. I need to have work from school. So, um, and also when you have a lot of homework on the weekend, it stresses people out, even though I don't really get homework, but other people so so that's gives you an example of they create that video and you can set this up so that it is just your class or you can share the link with other classrooms and they can go in and it's public and they can respond as well once again here's a great chance to share all those things they need to know about digital citizenship about why it's important to be professional, about things we post and don't post. Um, and if you, like I said, want to know more about Flipgrid, I don't have time today to show you all the ins and outs, but 
use this bit.ly. We'll take you to my website and we'll take you through step-by-step -step how to get involved in Flipgrid. And trust me, you'll love it. Okay. Here's an example of one where we shared responses with our contacts through the Global Read Aloud. Now, you don't have to do videos. If you have students who are video camera shy, um, and we actually just use Chromebooks, but you can also use Flipgrid as an app on an iPad or your phone. Um, but if you have students who are a little bit video shy and they prefer to blog or you want them to do more writing, here's an example of some um, blogs that were created for a Monster Calls, which was two years ago for the Global Read Aloud. And we were using writeabout.com. And usually uh, during the Global Read Aloud, writeabout.com actually allows you to use their platform for free. Now that's something that's happened the last couple of years, which is great. Um, and hopefully it continues, but there's lots of great blogging platforms out there like Kid Blog or EduBlog. You just need to find one that works for you and you can keep it to your classroom or you can open up the blog and ask other classrooms to respond, just like you did with Flipgrid. Now, something that my students like doing is um, postcards and whether you do snail mail or digital, all works. So digital postcards were something that my students created and I have a link there if you wanna see more of them, but they each created a digital postcard using a Google slide um, about themselves. And we talked about what things we would include on it or not and how to show who we are using, using visuals. If you don't use um, Google, then you could also use Pic Collage or Canva or any of these other great platforms that are out there. Here's an example of one that Kaylee made. So she's showing you the things that she's interested in, horses and hockey. And then she's also showing you a few things about St. Thomas. There's poor old Jumbo. And there is our railway, um, the old railway museum and things that she likes to do. And then you would take a picture of that slide and tweet it out. Or you could put it on your website and share the link to your website with other classrooms. And that's a great way for students to kind of get to know each other and to create their own postcard without having any of the cost of A, buying the postcard or B, mailing it. Another thing that you can do is set up a Google My Map. Here's one that a classroom created in 2017 of all the classes reading a monster calls. So they created it and then um, shared the, um, the link on Twitter and used the hashtag GRA for the book Monster Calls and they also shared it on the Facebook group. And then classrooms from around the world could add their own pin. So you could see that where all the different classrooms were reading the book. Now I took this fairly early and there were certainly way more classrooms than this and they were, they were all over the world as well. But this kind of gives you an example. If you want to see the full map, go to the bit.ly and then click on this link. We like to create our own Google map um, the kids create a, a Google map in their Google Drive and they each time we connect with a classroom somewhere, we would create a little pin and quite often um, if they've sent us a postcard or they've emailed us a picture or a video, we will include that in the pin. Um, but it's very neat for them to see where some of these places are and how far away it is. This is from 2017. So we don't have quite as many um, Contacts, the 2018 map is really full. Uh, I wish I had uh, taken a picture of that to share, but um, we connected with classrooms from very far away this time. We had connections in um, France and uh, Singapore and New Zealand. So yeah, great, great connections to be made. And then when you put it on Google My Maps, it becomes very, very real to them. Of course, you can always do the old snail mail too. These are from 2017. Um, we sent out postcards uh, with pictures of Jumbo because we're St. Thomas on them. Um, in 2017, which is our first time in the Global Read Aloud, we sent them to 38 schools. And here are a few of the cards and letters that we got back. And then we would look each one up on Google Maps. Now this year in 2018 for Refugee, we sent and received over 100 postcards from over the world. We had a bulletin board set up in the room that was absolutely full of all these postcards. Some schools sent postcards, some sent letters. And then uh, when the Global Read Aloud was over, um, we shared out all the postcards and the kids thought it was great that they got to take home a real live postcard, something that they don't um, get a lot of in their, their lives anymore. Now, however 
you participate in the global read aloud or any read aloud, make sure that at the end of it, that you celebrate the learning. Thank everyone involved if you've set it up and they participated. Celebrate your success, especially with your students and participants, whether you tweet out a quick video or whether you just have a little classroom dance party. You want to make sure that the kids are as excited at the end as they were at the beginning of your read aloud. All right, so resources for read alouds. Once again, if you want the live link, go down here, bit.ly slash read and connect. And here they are. If you want more on Mindset Monday, check out um, Anik Roke's uh, blog. If you want more on the Global Read Aloud, of course, go to the website for theglobalreadaloud.com. More on the Kindness Crew CRSS. Karen Caswell has a blog about it at her Wix site. Book Snaps, I showed you um, Tara's website right there. Here is the live link. And these ladies are the creators of these different read alouds that I participated in recently. Here are their handles for Twitter. Make sure you follow them. And Tara Martin is just an awesome person to follow. Anyway, she's got a book out called Be Real. Great read. Now the Global Read Aloud I mentioned has some Facebook pages. If you go to um, their Twitter handle or to the website, they will show you how to get involved. They'll show you how to sign up. If you're looking for a specific type of read aloud or you want to start your own, remember, use that hashtag read alouds in the search bar and you'll find out more information about different read alouds that are out there. So I believe that kind of comes to the end of my presentation. I hope that this has been really helpful information for you. If you want to know more, if you have questions um, for the next little while, I'm available through the EdTech Camp on Air hashtag, or you can connect through me using my Twitter handle at Ramona Maharg. Check out my website, get yourself a copy of this slideshow, or you can go to my website. I got lots of great presentations there if you're interested in those as well. But I just want to thank you for your time today. And I hope that you've enjoyed this presentation and all the presentations that are running today as a part of EdTech Ed Camp on Air. And I'd really like to thank the York Regional District School Board for allowing me to be a part of it. Have a great day, everybody.